Well, good morning. It's Friday morning. And here on this Friday, we're going to be reading the Revelation to John, chapter 13, verses 1 through 10. And I saw a beast rising out of the sea with ten horns and seven heads, with ten diadems on its horns and blasphemous names on its heads. And the beast that I saw was like a leopard. Its feet were like a bear's and its mouth like a lion's mouth. And to it the dragon gave his power and his throne and great authority. <clears throat> One of its heads seemed to have a mortal wound, but its mortal wound was healed, and the whole earth marveled as they followed the beast. And they worshipped the dragon, for he had given authority to the beast. And they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like the beast, and who can fight against it? And the beast was given a mouth, uttering haughty and blasphemous words. And it was allowed to exercise authority for 42 months. It opened its mouth to utter blasphemies against God, blaspheming his name and his dwelling, that is, those who dwell in heaven. Also, it was allowed to make war on the saints and to conquer them. And authority was given it over every tribe and people and language and nation, and all who dwell on earth will worship it. Everyone whose name has not been written before the foundation of the world in the book of life of the Lamb who was slain. If anyone has an ear, let him hear. If anyone is to be taken captive, to captivity he goes. If anyone is to be slain with the sword, with the sword he must be slain. Here is a call for the endurance and faith of the saints. So the first beast, and there's going to be a second one in the rest of the chapter, the beast from the sea and the beast from the earth, and they're different. But here we have the first beast, and it's a um, uh, political ruler, and the images that were given, which are all taken out of the Old Testament, but seem to refer to um, Antiochus IV, the Epiphanes, the uh, ruler of the... Seleucid Kingdom of the Greeks, basically the ruler of the Eastern Mediterranean in, in those days, and um, he was a very terrible enemy of the church and, and just enemy of everybody. He was a, a bad guy, a nasty ruler, and killed a lot of people. And so um, all of these images just sort of point to him and and suggest that he is a terrible ruler and who will make war on the church. Well, all of that stuff gets transmogrified in our time into, oh, this guy is going to come and he'll be smooth-tongued and everybody will love him and he'll put barcodes on our heads and and stuff. And, and if you're using barcodes, you're going to hell and all that kind of thing. Folks, calm down. All of that modern interpretation, you know, it, it sounds feasible and it, because it's all been worked out very carefully. Well, every generation has been doing that since the 200s. You know, they thought that was true of Napoleon, and, well, it wasn't. And they thought it was true of Henry Kissinger, and he died. And so, you know, we keep doing this. We just need to stop and take a deep breath and see that this really refers to um, the situation the church was in when the book was written and the apocalyptic stuff is there to hide the meaning from the Romans because especially in the next part, it's going to get very, very clear uh, to those of us who know the key that Rome is the enemy and Roman authority is the authority that uh, we we have to push against. And so um, you don't want to go too headlong into all this uh, this apocalyptic fervor, mostly because, you know, it will be like those guys that always predict the end of the world and then the day comes and the world doesn't end and they, oh, well, we, we made a mistake in our calculations. Yeah, you made a mistake, all right. Um, and so, you know, as someone said once in a Bible class to me, well, it's possible, though, because the technology makes it feasible to do these things in a way that wasn't true before. And I said, well, I'll, I'll give you that. Technology is, has greatly increased our ability to communicate and things. And so it's possible 
But I don't think that means that we need to be watching out for, you know, Henry Kissinger and Ronald Reagan because they're not going to take over. In fact, both of them are dead, so there you go. But um, the, the note at the end of it is that the church must persevere, that this beast, this enemy, will make war even on the saints. But those who um, remain faithful will ultimately be saved from the terrors of this world and be rescued. And that's what we're waiting for, hoping for, and living for. That's what um, the gospel promises us. And so we don't have to be afraid and terrified and worried about every everything that happens because, you know, things are going to happen and we're all going to get through it just fine. So cling to Jesus and don't worry about the possibilities. All right. So tomorrow we'll read about the second beast and we'll fit some of this together. And I think it'll make a little more sense to you um, on Saturday. So we'll see you then. Have a great day.